Well, we'll sing here before Pastor comes just a simple chorus of this is give thanks with a grateful heart. We'll sing it through once tonight and then Pastor will come. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Thank you, uh, Brother King, for uh, your willingness to participate and lead the congregational singing. And I'm so thankful for uh, the opportunity we have this evening. Uh, again, we normally uh, assemble on Wednesday night, uh, but uh, for several decades now, we have assembled on Tuesday, uh, the week of Thanksgiving. And um, I appreciate uh, those who are present, those who are listening via live stream, and I pray uh, that the service will be a, a blessing and a help to all. And as I said Sunday, let me echo uh, my uh, sentiments towards each and every family. I do wish each and every family here at uh, CBC a happy uh, Thanksgiving. And uh, as some are traveling, we pray the Lord would extend traveling mercies. And then, of course, we have those who are not only traveling to see uh, grandparents and family, but we have those who have traveled uh, here to um, the Houston area to visit with family. Uh, Thanksgiving is always a very, uh, the Lord affords us a very sweet time of fellowship. We'll be in the book of Hebrews tonight. And so take your Bibles and turn with me, if you will, to Hebrews chapter 1. Now, I'm not Amy Comey Barrett. I say that. I think most of you know. Uh, they asked her uh, during the interview uh, if um, she would hold up her notes, and she held up a blank sheet. Do you remember? She held up a blank sheet. Well, um, I want you to know I do have notes, but uh, uh, as most of you know, I'm a note preacher, um, and, um, but I only have uh, one page, and so um, I purpose to bring you an abbreviated message. Our desire, as always, the week of Thanksgiving is not so much to hear from the preacher as to hear from the congregation, and so uh, I'm going to bring a, a, an abbreviated message, uh, a devotion, if you will, what my pastor uh, Tanya's dad referred to as a radio message, and we had a radio ministry, and so uh, he, uh, he was a 15-minute radio message, and so we only had just uh, about 10 minutes to get it said. Uh, we had some singing along with the message, and um, uh, so we'll bring you a, a radio uh, message, an abbreviated message this evening. Now, I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 11. I'll begin reading in verse 1. We'll read down through uh, verse uh, number 4. And uh, you listen silently as I read 
allowed. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Now that word better, of course, if you're familiar with the book of Hebrews, it will um, show up throughout the book. Uh, there is that which is set before us and Christ is said to be superior to. And the first thing that is set before us is um, angels. And uh, we are made uh, to realize that Christ is superior to angels. And of course, you and I know uh, there is nothing that we could uh, set before us that's superior to Christ and uh, his accomplishments. Uh, we are afforded, if you will, a summary uh, of this here in these opening verses of Hebrews chapter uh, 11. I call your attention to the word inheritance. Uh, you'll find it here in uh, verse uh, number uh, four, and it carries with it the idea of a fixed reward. Um, and this fixed reward is obtained when satisfaction is achieved. Now, um, when I say satisfaction is achieved, uh, you and I on, on Thursday will we'll sit down and uh, we will eat our Thanksgiving meal and we will be satisfied. Uh, some will get up from the table earlier than others. And, uh, and so uh, perhaps uh, a small child will get up uh, having been satisfied. And then maybe later an older sibling will get up having been satisfied. And then maybe mom. Uh, and then some of us dads uh, will be the, the last to leave the table. But having done so, uh, we uh, will have been satisfied at least until after our afternoon nap. And then we'll return to the table and uh, again enjoy maybe an extra slice of pie or uh, reach into the refrigerator and, and uh, 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 get an extra piece of turkey or ham. Now, here, um, it's God that is satisfied. Uh, it's the Father in heaven that's satisfied. And what he's satisfied with is uh, the work that was assigned to his only begotten son. And, and that's very clear in the text. And I think it's clear in your mind uh, uh, as well as mine uh, that the Father was satisfied. And so uh, if you'll note, Jesus sat down uh, here in the text. Uh, the Bible says, uh, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. And so it carries with the idea, having accomplished uh, the work assigned him, uh, while here on earth, uh, during the 33 years that he was here, he lived a sinless life. Then he went to the cross and died uh, a vicarious death. He died as our substitute. And um, uh, we know uh, that uh, his, uh, uh, his efforts were efficacious. Uh, uh, we do not believe that uh, baptism is efficacious, that it has saving merit. We do not believe that receiving the elements of communion are efficacious, that they have saving merit. We believe baptism and uh, communion, the two ordinances given to the Baptist church, uh, uh, that they are um, symbolic. Um, but we believe what they symbolize um, is efficacious. We do believe that the literal blood of Jesus Christ is efficacious, that his death satisfied the Father. How many of you agree with that? Amen. 
that the father was completely satisfied and therefore his son takes his rightful place at the right hand of uh, the father. Now, uh, having said that, we think of a document uh, reaching maturity and then that which the document affords uh, can be claimed an annuity. We think of uh, a deed. Uh, once um, uh, the requirements of the deed uh, are met, then whatever that deed uh, promises, uh, uh, the, 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 the individual or the family in possession of that deed can lay claim to that deed. Uh, of course, this carries with it uh, the idea of domain. Uh, it has to do with uh, uh, all powers given unto me. And so we know uh, that the resurrected Christ, uh, he had accomplished, if you will. Uh, he was uh, uh, fully successful, and now all things are under his feet. And uh, I'm giving you a lot of Bible, but we see the fulfillment of, uh, if you will, the first messianic uh, Prophecy, Genesis 3.15, the fulfillment, and uh, ma having made a show. And uh, uh, we know that uh, uh, the efforts of Jesus has satisfied, if you will, the Father. Again, his works were efficacious. They were effective, fully effective, and it blotted out the handwriting. Uh, every wrong deed that you've ever done was written down and the accuser had that to present in court against you. And uh, if, he, if we were without an advocate, we would have been sentenced to hell. And uh, we know we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Amen. What a blessing it is to claim that promise. Now, with that said... I want you to turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11 and a very familiar passage. And uh, let me ask uh, the question, uh, what do we know? And I'll say this, God has provided us with a book that enables us as believers to live through uncertain times. And we find ourselves uh, living through uncertain times. The hymn writer was right who said, in times like these, we need a Bible. Now, I won't attempt to become Brother King and break out into song, but I love that song. In times like these, we need a Bible. And I would say in the year 2020, we would all stand in agreement uh, that if we've ever needed our Bible, it's been the year 2020. Amen. Um, and um, uh, so I'm thankful that he's provided us with his word, which is uh, set forth in the opening pages and the opening verses of uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse uh, 1 down through verse uh, number 4. I read in you here, and it says, God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. So uh, he, uh, he, he gifted them with uh, the necessary tool uh, to, uh, to receive instructions so that they could follow a game plan that would lead to their redemption and not just their redemption, but the redemption of mankind. Uh, I'm thankful for my Bible, amen. I'm thankful for uh, the Word of God. Now, uh, here in Hebrews 11, 6, we're told the character trait that God or the character trait that pleases God during uncertain times. Now, if you received the email, and hopefully you did, and I appreciate my daughter, you have no idea all the uh, additional things she does uh, for the ministry here at CBC. I'm speaking of Holly in reference to uh, sending out uh, emails. I hope you know that the emails you receive, uh, for the most part, um, I give her the assignment of, of of sending the emails out and and uh, and she uh, she puts in the necessary work so that you stay informed. Um, if you'll note here uh, today, you received the email and it said 2020 has been a year of uncertain times. 
But lest we forget, God is still at work in uncertain times. He still speaks during uncertain times. He still deserves our praise during uncertain times. And so, again, in times like these, we need a Bible. And I'm thankful that we have been in possession with uh, the Word of God. And, and God has enabled, uh, enabled us to get through, um, to endure through um, days of uncertainty. And so here in uh, chapter 11, verse number 6, we're told the, uh, uh, the character trait that pleases God during uncertain times. Look with me at verse 6. It says, but without, what's the word? It's impossible to please him. If I could add this, if I might, in uncertain times. You see, uh, it's not so much you need faith when it's smooth sailing. You need faith when you're in rough waters. And so if you'll note here, it says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. And I'm going to say in uncertain times, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Come go with me to the Sea of Galilee. And, and uh, again, the sea is at rest. And all of a sudden, uh, uh, they encounter a storm and they immediately go to Jesus and they pose a question, Master, carest not that we perish. And of course, we know that he spoke to the storm and he said, peace be still. And he quieted the waters. And so... Uh, what I'm saying to you is that without faith, it's impossible to please him uh, during uncertain times. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And so we're talking about faith, that which is called for during uncertain times. And uh, what is faith? Well, we're given an answer to this question back in verse 1. Uh, again, verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, and then it says, the evidence of things not seen. And so if we uh, read down through this chapter, and of course we're familiar with Hebrews chapter 11, but if we read down through this chapter, we discover that faith is not just an attitude that is formed in our minds, but an activity that we follow in our members. Now, I want to repeat that. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now, uh, though we uh, are familiar with this verse, and perhaps you could quote this verse, you could, uh, even as I was reading it, perhaps you were, without even looking at your Bible, you were saying the words. It's a verse that we're well uh, familiar with here at CBC. But I want you to understand that faith uh, is not just an attitude that is formed in our minds, but an activity that we follow in our members. And when I say in our members, I'm not talking about members of a local church, but I'm speaking in, uh, in, in reference to what Paul was speaking of in, um, in Romans chapter 6. And uh, I'm not going to turn there. It's not our purpose uh, to do an, in, um, uh, an in-depth study of, of tonight's topic. And uh, again, you're well informed, but we're faced each and every day, uh, and I could say each and every year, the year 2020, uh, you know, there was January 1, uh, 2020. Uh, little did we know when we introduced our theme, what we would be facing uh, when we chose the theme that we chose. Um, and within a few days, it will be January 1st, 2021. But what I'm saying is, um, uh, we face every day, uh, we face every uh, week, we face every month, we face every year, we face uh, we, we face a decision, sin or sanctification. That's the decision we make. Do I choose sin or do I choose sanctification? And we don't have time to get into an in-depth study of the context here in Romans 6, but the focus is not so much on the refusal to succumb to lust, which we should 
uh, refused to succumb to lust, but the, uh, the context there uh, in Romans chapter 6, if you will, is not so, so much that we refuse to succumb to lust, but our refusal to succumb to love. And, and um, uh, the Bible tells us that the love of Christ constraineth us. <laughs> you, know what, you know what that carries with it? It carries with it the idea, and I, I hope I can share this with you, and again, I'm attempting to do it as briefly as I can, but it carries with it the idea that there were eight souls that were safe during uh, uh, the storm of all storms, the flood. Eight souls were safe. They were in the ark, which is, again, a picture of Christ. And it says the love of Christ constraineth us. And so uh, we practice, if you will, and I'm looking for a word um, uh, uh, that Paul used, uh, and it's not coming to me right now, but the, the idea is uh, uh, to um, uh, uh, temperate in all things. And it carries with it the understanding of self-control. In other words, Brother Joel, though I'm facing um, uh, a challenge in life, I'm not going to lose control. Uh, we all know the greatest sin that we could ever commit is the sin of unbelief. Amen. And so during times of challenge, uh, unparalleled challenges, we're called to have faith, to exercise faith in a God who never fails. Someone say amen. In a God who never fails. And so um, uh, the focus is not so much on our refusal to succumb to lust, but our refusal to succumb to love. And so we're assigned, uh, we were given this assignment to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Um, and uh, the Bible tells us um, if we choose sin, if we choose to embrace uh, sin uh, instead of remaining steadfast, re being unmovable, always have found, always found abounding in the work of the Lord, uh, then uh, we've missed out on an opportunity to, to demonstrate to this world and to prove to God our undying love. Again, we love Him because He first loved us. Um, and I want to I want to call your attention, if I might, in closing out this devotion, um, uh, in regards to a phrase that we find here in verse number one, Hebrews eleven. It says, "Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen." Now, I'm not here to rewrite the Bible, uh, as my pastor said. The Bible doesn't need to be rewritten; uh, it needs to be reread. But terms matter. Uh, we uh, need to develop a, a Bible vocabulary. And word, the words sometimes, uh, the meaning of words change. Um, and uh, uh, we see that word hope and, or hoped. And I, I, our modern day, in our modern day vernacular, uh, it does not measure up to what's being said here. Uh, we're not talking, about, it's not reluctant or gloomy observance. Okay, now listen carefully. We're almost done. Not reluctant or gloomy observance, but gleeful obedience. That's what the word hope. Uh, it carries with it not uh, reluctant or gloomy observance, but gleeful obedience. I think of Peter. We'll give this illustration and we'll be done. But I think of Peter when he was commanded to launch out into the deep, you know the story, and drop his nets. Do you remember what Peter said? Peter said, we have fished all night and caught nothing. He said, nevertheless, at thy word, um, we, will, uh, we, will, we, we will venture back out and we'll launch out into the deep. So we will do so at your word. And they did so at his word. Having witnessed a great number of fishes, uh, that uh, uh, were harvested that day, he came under great conviction. Now, let me ask you a question. Did he obey? And the answer is absolutely. Uh, he obeyed, but there was a, <laughs> a reluctant 
a gloomy observance. However, he did so um, with a reluctant, gloomy observance, and not with a, and it wasn't done with gleeful obedience. Now, I'm not preaching to Peter. He's not here. He's not a part of this congregation. I'm preaching to you. Uh, I think most of us have done right by God in regards to the challenges uh, set before us in the year 2020. I'm, I, you're here tonight. And then there are those listening and watching on live stream. And so you're still here and you're to be commended. Um, and so I, I think most of us have done right by God in the year 2020. And, and, and in spite of the challenge, in spite of the inconveniences, um, but have we done so with the spirit of gleefulness? Now, that's the qu a question that only you can answer. Remember, the Bible says, rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Uh, that does not mean if the challenge is not too great, rejoice. No, no. Regardless of the challenge, regardless of the size of the giant, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So uh, I think most of us have done right by God uh, in reference to the challenge. Like Peter, we've launched out into the deep and we've let down our nets. <laughs> Lord, uh, at, thy, at thy word, uh, we'll act. And so uh, we have throughout the year... Uh, uh, done what uh, we have been called to do, but have we done what we've done with a spirit of gleefulness? One good thing about the mask, <laughs> and I say that in the sense of um, uh, I'm not an infectious disease uh, expert, but I'm saying there is one good thing about the mask. It has hid the doubt and fear some actually feel in their hearts. I mean, you're here, but as you look at the journey from January 1 to uh, through all the challenges, I guess with COVID-19 uh, at the core, but all the other challenges, have you endured, uh, <laughs> uh, has it been a reluctant, gloomy observance, or have you continued to be steadfast, unmovable, always found abounding in the work of the Lord with a gleeful obedience. That's the, the understanding of the word hope here. Let's look at it again. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for. Gleefully hoped for. And so, again, I'm not here to rebuke you but the Lord did rebuke me in my spirit that there have been times during 2020 that my joy has been challenged. And instead of being found rejoicing in the Lord, I've been found just putting one foot in front of the other, trying to just get through the end of the day. Oh, and uh, I don't think uh, the hymn singing tonight uh, uh, caters to just getting through the end of the day. The, the hymn singing tonight has focused on the fact that the Lord, the joy of the Lord is our strength. <laughs> and uh, that's the purpose of hymn singing. And so we're going to have some more hymn singing and we're going to close the service out in hymn singing. But at this time, we're going to have some testimonies and to, uh, to give a testimony, you have to have a testimony. And so brother, uh, Joel, if you'll come and let's start over here on the left side and um, uh, we'll work our way back and work our way around. And what we're doing is just providing members of this church to give a brief testimony. Um, and, uh, uh, and so who will be first over here to give a testimony? All right. Sister Betty, we'll start with Sister Betty. Brother Joel is going to hold the mic. All you have to do is speak into the mic. That way, those who are at home uh, watching the service, they can actually hear the testimony. They would not be able to hear the testimony without the microphone. That's why we have the microphone. Everyone else in the sanctuary can hear, but they're not going to hear at home. 
and they want to hear your testimony. So go ahead, Sister I, and I can't talk loud. So this morning at 4 o'clock, I got up and was reading my Bible and praying for our grandson who's been running from the Lord. And I, I just said, Lord, would you give me an opportunity? And all the noise and everybody milling around, would you give me a chance to talk to Caleb about his salvation? I'm not exaggerating. I stopped praying, I looked up, and I saw his feet coming down the stairs just a little after four o'clock. And the Lord gave me an opportunity to share with Caleb my salvation experience. And I told him, I was just a few years older than he is now when I was saved. I said, but the night I was saved, I was actually driving down the road. I had heard a sermon by Brother Jim Garrison. I knew that if the tribulation came, I was going to be left behind. And I told Caleb, I said, it is so fresh in my heart that that night I wanted Jesus Christ more than I wanted anything in the world. And I told Caleb, I said, it's been 47 years, and I still want Jesus more than I want anything. Amen. And we had such a precious conversation. He told me about when he was a little boy that he had asked the Lord to save him, but that he's been running from God. And we just talked. And one of the instances I shared with him was the story about that storm, how God had calmed the storm when we were camping and how it impressed our children, his mother. And uh, I just told him that God had a wonderful plan for his life, but so did Satan. And Satan's plan was to kill, to steal, and destroy, right. and just encouraged him to follow the Lord, that it's worth it. Amen. Thank you, Sister Betty. Uh, and that's certainly God answering prayer, because teenagers don't get up that early. <laughs> I know that by, by experience. And so for... For her to pray that prayer and then to have a teenager come downstairs at the same time, you know that's God answering prayer. Amen. All right, Brother West. Uh, my uh, testimony is to answered prayer. Many of you have been praying for my son, Mike, who's had colon cancer. He had a, a blood test uh, Monday, I believe, and to get cancer markers and stuff. Two weeks ago, he was at a 12, and the normal, they told him, was between one and six. Well, his blood test came back, it was four and a half. So, and the doctor told him, he said, you have no more colon cancer. He'll, he's due to have a PET scan the seventh of next month to see about the uh, liver cancer. And from all indications, it is gone too. But uh, that is a, a, a real answer to prayer. And I just uh, have to thank the Lord over and over about Mike because when he, when he first told us about this, uh, of course, natural a thought of most people that that uh, that could be life threatening but through it all my son has maintained a good outlook even all the ups and downs uh, doctors telling them they're going to do one thing and turn around and do something else and it turned out not to be too good for him but through it all it uh They've gotten to the point where, or they've gotten to the place where they intended to go when they started out, almost. So hopefully, come the 7th of December, he'll get a cancer-free uh, diagnosis. And uh, so then he's still, he's sometime later on in the spring of next year, he's still got two surgeries to go through uh, to try to correct uh, his colostomy bags and stuff and try to, try to get him to where he, he does not have to have one for life. 
All right. Well, thank you, Brother Wes, and we praise the Lord. And let's continue to pray for his son, uh, Mike Weldon. All right, someone else over here? Let's see another hand go up. If not, we'll move to this side. If you have a testimony tonight, again, anyone have a, a testimony to give? If not, that's fine. We've, we just recently had testimony meeting, and we may have drained the tank. Uh, any, any testimonies over here? Okay. If not, Brother Kevin, come back. Appreciate the Weldon sharing testimonies uh, this evening about uh, how God's working in the life of their grandson and then also how God has worked uh, in the life of uh, their son, uh, Michael. And so as we continue through uncertain times, uh, let's continue to be people of the book and not just people of this book, but also continue to enjoy the... Um, the hymns of the faith. So, Brother Kevin, thank you again for your willingness to uh, help out and look forward to the next hymn. Thank you. Stand with me and let's close tonight with probably the ultimate hymn of Thanksgiving, and it's this To God be the glory, great things He's done in our life, church. All three verses tonight To God be the glory. Join me on that first verse. To God be the glory, great things He had done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son Who yielded his life and atonement for sin And opened the life gate that all may go in Praise the Lord, praise the Lord Let the earth hear his voice Praise the Lord, praise the Lord let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God. The vilest offender <laughs> That moment from Jesus A pardon receives Praise the Lord, praise the Lord Let the earth hear His voice Praise the Lord, praise the Lord Let the people rejoice Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give Him the glory, great things He had done, great things He had taught us, great things He had done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give Him the glory, great things He hath done. Amen. Good singing tonight, church. You're dismissed.